Hi, my name is Charles Butler. I'm a talk show host here in Chicago, Illinois. I worked at WVON for four years and I worked at IND for almost a year. I can tell you that working in a war zone on 87th Street between Stoney and King, I was constantly threatened and I saw the remnants of at least 15 shootings uh, transiting uh, either to the highway or going back to Stony Island. I can also tell you that someone was shot 50 feet in front of the WVON uh, studio, at which uh, forced the uh, guardian angels to come down and stand guard at the Vidoc. So uh, when you people talk about uh, taking our guns away, you have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea about the violence <clears throat> and the protection that's needed by law-abiding citizens. And I'm going to say this to you so that, you're, so that we're very clear. Uh, I had two incidents where uh, well, several incidents, actually, but I always made clear to uh, my listeners, uh, especially those who threatened me, I uh, received constant death threats, that I was packing and that I would shoot them. There was not going to be any negotiation. We're not going to talk. You're not going to confront me. I will shoot you. That was very clear. At the end of the day, you liberals like to play games. You like to endanger folks' lives while you uh, walk around with your armed guards and, uh, and, and, and your fancy, you know, uh, uh, hotels and, uh, and all that nonsense. You're the political elite. I know your life is more important than the, than the average everyday citizen. Um, Harold Davis, a community activist and former uh, enforcer for the Vice Lords, came to the station and threatened me threatened to kill me. I went to the Chicago police numerous times over a six month period. They never took a police report. They knew who Harold Davis was. They knew that he was a dangerous man and they knew when he protested me that he had ex-felons uh, out uh, there marching around WVON. Call Melody Span Cooper. Barack Obama knows Melody Span Cooper as he does me. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can go and look up Charles Butler Must Go and see the demonstration for yourself. There's nothing peaceful about it. There's nothing funny about it. These people are dangerous, and the only thing they understood was that I was packing and I was going to protect myself. I wasn't going to call the Chicago Police Department, who could care less about my life. The second instance I'm going to share with you is when I was taking a, a woman home named Davida Flute, who, who uh, currently works at WVON. So you can call her and ask her if this story is true or not. I was taking her home because it took me 10 minutes out of my uh, travel home to drop her off or she had to ride the bus at 10, 10 a.m. at night and it would take her an hour and 40 minutes before she got home and she had to walk uh, several blocks to get to the house that she was staying at. So I took her home. On, on one night when I was taking her home, uh, when she was sitting in as a, an assistant producer, uh, five young men uh, approach, started approaching our car at a stoplight. I couldn't go forward, I couldn't go backward. So I pulled out my weapon, a nine millimeter Taurus, and uh, because it was always, always had a round in the chamber when I was in the war zone, and uh, stood my ground. Now if those young men had kept coming in their hoodies, when they saw us, they looked at us, pulled their hoodies up over their head, and started walking toward the car. Well, what I did was to engage them with my eyes, uh, arrange my weapon so that I could clearly start shooting them because they meant no good. Bottom line is, when you perpetrate and you uh, confront people, then you should expect to get whatever it is you get. Because at the end of the day, all I'm looking for is to go home to be with my family. I'm not a social worker. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a parent to these people. I could care less about them. You liberals are some sick people. And that's why you die. That's why you're raped. That's why you're maimed. That's why you just well, let's, I'll just give the criminal my 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 uh, wallet, and maybe he'll let me go. Well, guess what? I'm a man. I don't play those games. I don't let anybody take anything from me. And that includes the United States government, run by a bunch of. I don't know where you people come from, and I absolutely don't know why you're sending me these, the, the, this request for this video, but I'm going to give it to you. So anyway, those young men seeing that I w probably was a cop or I was an FBI agent or something, but they knew one thing was for sure. I was not to be confronted, uh, and if I were, somebody was, was going to get hurt. And let me tell you, it was not going to be me because I shoot straight. 
and I practice all the time. And yes, I am licensed to have my guns, and I am licensed to carry my guns, except in the great state of Illinois, which, as Justice Alito said, and I had been saying for four years, that Mayor Daley and Rahm Emanuel f refuses to protect black and brown people in these neighborhoods. Barack Obama, you know, living on the corner of Greenwood and 50, 51st, that people are being shot and killed two blocks from your house. In Kenwood, in the summer of 2011, in August, they called a meeting. So many people were being shot in the Kenwood neighborhood. And you have the nerve to talk about uh, uh, denying people the right to protect themselves. And by the way, Eric Holder's little leak on his, uh, what was it, that little memo? Guess what? You're not going to confiscate Americans' guns. You guys are only there for four more years. Actually, uh, uh, three three uh, years and, in in, you know, what, 70 days, uh, 50 days or something? Yes, we're counting the time that you leave because it will be great for America to get rid of all of you amateurs. You're the biggest group of amateurs we've ever had in American history, and you will go down that way in American history as being naive, immature, and uh, idealistic, besides being socialistic with your distribution of wealth. Now, I had another incident that I'm going to share with you, coming home from WVON, where two men ran up to my car, and I pulled out my weapon, rolled down the windows and pulled out my weapon. Because at the end of the day, I didn't know if they were carjacking me, they were going to shoot me. I had no idea what they were going to do, but the bottom line was I was prepared to defend myself. Because at the end of the day, all I'm concerned about is going home, not dealing with some criminals like you cowards. Give up your guns. Give up your protection. And then tell me to give up mine. You're sickening. You're disgusting. And I tell you, I hope when you meet your maker, he deals with you. Because as Jesus said, Luke 22, sell your cloak and buy two swords. Think about it. 